or for his family and of course it's a great loss to the nation also. Indeed. Uh, the Prime Minister this morning uh, issued a statement. I'll just read a little bit of it to you. Uh, he, he describes Gough Whitlam as a giant of his time, uniting the Australian Labor Party, winning two elections, establishing diplomatic relations with China, the first Australian Prime Minister to visit China, um, an enduring legacy the Prime Minister describes that as. Uh, also this, which um, is something that Matt Thistlethwaite referred to earlier, and I, I, I guess is that one of those seminal images of, of the Whitlam era uh, that uh, the Prime Minister says Gough Whitlam recognised the journey that our country needed to, ta to take with Indigenous Australians, the image of soil passing from Gough Whitlam's hand to that of Vincent Lingiari, a reminder that all Australians share the same land and the same hopes. And I think one of the uh, most phenomenal um, aspects of Gough Whitlam's time as Prime Minister is that he did things that were so controversial at the time that have become absolutely embedded in our Australian history and character. Uh, the, that image of passing the soil into Vincent Lingari's hand, starting a process of giving land rights to Indigenous Australians that had waited so long and worked so hard. Um, Medi, introducing Medibank that's become Medicare, an absolutely fundamental part of our nation's character now, accessible health care for all Australians, making university education free so that people like my older brother, first in our family ever to go to university, but the experience of so many Australians, that idea that access to university should be based on your intellect and your ability to work hard, not whether your parents are wealthy. Uh, these are things that have become part of our national character. The, um, the Prime Minister has very generously talked about the establishing of diplomatic relations with China. When Gough Whitlam did that as opposition leader, said that he would do it as opposition leader, very controversial thing to do. And yet it's been so critical to Australia's economic and security success in decades following, uh, following that. And so I think this, um, the, the lesson, I suppose, uh, is that those brave policy decisions that have set Australia on a better course uh, should inspire us to bravery today as well, to make those tough decisions, to uh, stand up and argue for the things that we believe in, uh, things that we know can make our nation stronger and stronger. On the foreign policy front that you referred to there, uh, he visited in 1971 China, before Kissinger, yeah. before Nixon. So not just... A, leading the country yes. in that sense, but leading the world yeah, as well. Absolutely. And I think now that seems like an uncontroversial thing to do. Most Australians now would acknowledge that our relationship with China is important for us economically and strategically, um, certainly that we have nothing to fear from China. At that time, you've got to understand how controversial it was to be opening up relations with a communist nation. The other great um, foreign policy achievement, of course, is returning uh, our troops from Vietnam, um, bringing back the last of our troops from Vietnam. Again, uh, it now, today, looking back, seems like the only obvious thing to do. And yet, at the time, incredibly controversial, a very brave move. A very a modern figure as well, wasn't he, in the lodge, along with his wife, Margaret yeah. Whitlam. They were powerful national leaders and figures, weren't they? They were great modernisers, you know, making sure that uh, no fault divorce, social security payments for sole parents, uh, reducing the voting age from 21 to 18. These were all uh, big steps on making Australia a more modern nation. But it was something more than that. It was actually the relationship between Gough and Margaret. The, the influence that Margaret uh, obviously had, the fact that she was prepared to speak her mind, the fact that, uh, in fact, she said um, she made a decision when she became the wife of the Prime Minister that she could sit quietly in her gilded cage and say nothing or she could use this position to do some good. And she used it to do some good. She, she speaks um, very eloquently in, an, uh, in a biography that's written about her, uh, about um, the... Um, the, the the empathy and the connectedness that she felt with uh, those women that lived in the Western Sydney seat that Gough represented, um, the work that she did in establishing libraries and swimming pools and arguing for those services in the suburbs of Sydney. Um, but more than that, the, the, the type of woman she was, she was so utterly herself, uh, it, full of intelligence and integrity and 
with this beautiful, close, loving relationship with her husband. It was a real, a real model of a, an equal relationship. Indeed it was. And uh, I, I guess for, as we reflect on this um, contribution from, from Gough Whitlam, dying at 98, a rich life, a long life, uh, we have to look at the legacy in terms of the impact on the modern Labor Party. Many Labor, senior Labor figures over the last few decades were inspired to enter politics, national life, because of a contribution and not a long prime ministership in you know historical standards, I guess, but three years made a huge lasting legacy, as you say, in social policy, but also in the impact on subsequent generations of your party leadership. He's the iconic figure for making a brave policy stand on a whole range of different issues. So he's an inspirational figure in that way. Uh, he's inspirational also because there's a whole lot of us who would never have gone to university but for the university changes that he made. And he was incredibly generous with his time as well. I, I noticed um, that the statement from his family talked about him as a loving and generous father. But he was, a, he was a loving and generous figure in the Labor Party as well. I know many of my colleagues, as I did, would uh, occasionally visit him in the office or have a cup of coffee with him in Double Bay. And he was um, so generous with his time and his advice. Uh, I mean, it, it, it always felt like a, a real um, thrill as, uh, as a you know, young person moving into a position of responsibility in the Labor Party, actually to be able to go and see Gough Whitlam and say, what do you think about these issues? Can you tell us a bit more about the history? What were you thinking when you made this decision? How did you, you know, how did you come to that position? And he, he was just phenomenally generous uh, intellectually and with his time. A, a great orator as well, wasn't he? Yeah, terrific. A, a parliamentary performer. Although he was, he was a terrific orator. He had a wonderful turn of phrase, but um, uh, sometimes he tended to, uh, you know, make speeches that were a little on the long side. And I always, I thought it was hilarious. Margaret would sit up the front sometimes with her walking stick as they got older, and she'd be, be you know, banging the stick on the ground. Come on, Goff, they've heard enough now. <laughs> Um, but again, you know, just such a beautiful sign of their relationship. Um, Jim uh, Middleton, my colleague earlier, described uh, Gough Whitlam as a flawed genius. Uh, I guess it was a tumultuous period, the most tumultuous in Australian political time, uh, I suppose arguably with the last few years. But I mean, 75, such a, a uh, tumultuous end to his prime ministership. Um, the, the social policy, of course, that was against the economic policy, was was the vision caught up? Was that the focus so much so that the the other things sort of fell away in terms of priority? Look, uh, I think it's completely unreasonable okay. to expect perfection from our leaders. All, all you can all you can hope for is that per, a person. Um, honestly does their very best for their country and there is no question that Gough Whitlam was a patriot that he did exactly what he thought he was, was right for his country uh, will will people find flaws with some of the decisions he made of course they will in the same way that uh, any Prime Minister will have a, a review of their time in office that includes successes great achievements for our nation and things that might have been done differently but uh, I think um, you know, in the relatively short time that Gough Whitlam was Prime Minister, our nation changed for the better. He left a lasting legacy in so many areas. And, um, and I mean, I'm, I, I have always been proud to be part of the party that he had such an impact on.